A lot of people are saying my scenario. Don't let people steal my scenario out there. I was the first one to say it. I've been saying this since last year. Yeah. I would love, hypothetically, even more than Naya Inouye versus Shushu, even more than Naya Inouye versus uh, Rafael Espinosa. I want Naya Inouye. I want a dream match between Naya Inouye and Juto Nakatani. Juto Nakatani is at bantamweight, and who has a championship at uh, bantamweight? Naya Inouye's younger brother, Takuba Inouye. I want Juto Nakatani to go and fight Takuba Inouye, who I fully anticipate that Juto would beat now, uh, Takuba Inoue in a good fight, then that would set up a very interesting revenge arc, kind of like <laughs> an anime-esque revenge arc between Naya Inoue and Juto Nakatani. Your brother's soul is mine. <laughs> you will be next. Like, Naya Inoue has his revenge arc that he wants to come back down and avenge his loss, uh, uh, his brother's loss, you know, Juto Nakatani and Naya Inoue. That'd be an explosive matchup. Don't let anybody steal my scenario. I've been hearing a lot of people say that. I've been saying this since last year. Don't let anybody. <laughs> hey, y'all gotta, y'all, gotta, y'all gotta fight for me out there in the YouTube comments. You know what I'm talking about? Like that, like that. In the YouTube streets. They be trying to steal my stuff. Nigga, you was a bitch! <laughs> From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGNG, and praise God to get money back for the YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I know what time it is. The doctor's in the house. Hey, man, you know I like to be outside usually and stuff like that. It's early in the morning, but, you know, they're outside doing some more work. You know what I'm talking about? Lucky I wake up early or so I'll be pissed. <laughs> They won't be up, but nah, I always wake up early anyway. But yeah, man. So today we want to talk about some some fights that just transpired last night, particularly Rafael Espinosa. You know, the main event versus against Sergio Torino, man. Shout out to him. That was a very good fight. Sergio Torino put up a put up a good effort, but but uh, um, Rafael Espinosa, El Divino was just too much, man. He was just too much for him. And you know, it's so crazy because now we got another person calling out now you anyway. Bullshit! Bullshit! At the featherweight division, right? Now you're the way featherweight division. Wrong. Wrong. Slow down, little buddy. Slow down. It's just so funny to me that people always say, oh, they're calling out in a way, they're calling out in a way. Bro, check out the video. The question is, uh, there could be a couple potential big fights in the future. Uh, maybe a fight in Japan with Inoue. Pues ahora vamos paso por paso. Ahora mi pelea es simplemente ganar esta, este video. What did he say? Oh. Yes, of course, it's something that I wanted to do. It's one of my goals to be pound for pound one of the best and to unify. So if you if you get out of your emotions and your feelings, you will realize that a lot of times these fighters aren't calling out in a way. They're being asked about in a way. And rightfully so, because Naya Inouye has made it made it abundantly clear that he has aspirations to move up to featherweight. Is he going to do it this year? Is he going to do it next year? We don't know. We don't know if it's imminent or we don't know if it's a, if it's eventual, you know, but it, but it's, it seems to be going to happen at some time. So naturally, he's an undisputed champion at Super Bantamweight, one weight class below 122. So a lot of people anticipate him to move up to 126. So that's actually going to ask him. If you listen to that clip I just played, Rafael Espinosa, he literally said that he wants to unify and become undisputed at 126. Yeah, what's next for you? There are a lot of great names in this weight class. Ahora quiero disfrutar un poco con mi familia y y que hablen los promotores, mis encargados. What did he say? There's a man out there who wants the rematch. Look, I'm going to take some rest and then I'm going to have my people. You know, and then the reporter kept asking him more questions. And one of those questions was about Naya Inouye. He was like, yeah, man, that's a dream fight, you know, especially if it moves up. And to further emphasize this point, Naya Inouye showed up to Bruce Shushu Carrington, another fighter that they claim is calling out Inouye, even though they're being asked and goaded and, you know, saying probed about these questions. You know, he showed up to his fight, you know, seemingly scoping out the competition and scouting uh, Shushu Carrington. And what's even more evident of that, he left immediately after the Shushu Carrington fight. The Shushu wasn't even the main event. It was Xander Zion versus Patrick Teixeira. Yeah. You know, so, um, so yeah, man, I think that, I think that it's a good fight, you know, but I'm, I'm gonna be honest, you know, I would rather now you anyway take care of business, um, at Super Bantamweight, which he does. He's already undisputed, right? I think he's, he's, uh, 
in my opinion, Alexander Usyk's number one. Now you anyways number two, and Terrence Crawford's number three, pound for pound. But if you take out, some people don't like to include heavyweights. That for me, if you take Usyk out, then now anyway would be number one, and then Terrence Crawford would be number two, especially because of Terrence Crawford's inactivity, right? But he does fight August third. But um. But at Super Bantamweight, you know, he could fight Akhmadaliev, you know, MJ Akhmadaliev. I think that's a good fight. Uh, he's going to be fighting TJ Doheny, and he was ordered to fight Akhmadaliev, but Bob Arum doesn't want him to fight Akhmadaliev. Look at you scared now, you ho. Scared like a little white pussy. You know, I think now you anyway wins that fight um, because he's just a beast. But I think that's that's an interesting fight at Super Bantamweight. So he still has some business he can handle there. And then um, before moving up to Featherweight, you know, and then, um, you know, um, but then when he does eventually move to featherweight, I think anybody's a good fight. You know, any, all these fighters are good fights, including Bruce Shu Carrington and including El Divino. But me personally, I'd rather El Divino uh, conquer conquer featherweight, you know, because there's four champions at featherweight, which is it's a heavy division right now. You have you have Rafael El Divino Espinosa, what? you have Ray Vargas, what? you have Nick Ball, what? and who's the fourth one? Uh, so, uh, uh, uh. Luis Lopez, Luis Lopez, right? Oh, so yeah. these are all good champions. I, I, I honestly feel like <laughs> after seeing um um uh after seeing El Divino Rafael Espinosa against Robiesi Ramirez last year and put in, in fight of the year candidate, you know what I'm saying? That fight was and upset of the year candidate too. That fight was crazy that he won. That was a great fight. He showed the G showed durability, he showed the warrior spirit, he showed that he has a chin. And he can recover, you know. And then his his dominant performance last night against Sergio Torino. I, I personally, man, out of the champions, Lopez, I would favor Espinosa over Lopez. I would favor Espinosa over Ray Vargas, and I would definitely favor Espinosa over Nick Ball, you know. So he could he can handle some business there. And then of course Bruce Shushu Carrington, you know, uh, people say, oh, he only has twelve fights. Yeah, he only has twelve fights, but he has an extensive amateur pedigree. You know, amateur is different from the pros, but he has over he has almost three hundred fights. And the amateurs, you know, and then boxing rec, you know, boxing rec slightly different, you know, you know, they they um they don't, they don't record, they're notorious for not recording all amateur fights, but it's hard to re- hard to keep track of all the amateur fights, you know, Am- amateur amateur tournaments go on and on all over every day, you know, uh, across across the world, so it'll be hard to keep track, you know, uh, but yeah, so he um Bruce Shushu character has almost three hundred amateur fights, and then not to mention he won the Olympic trials, right? He won the Olympic trials, and he's a go- Golden Glove champion as well. So you know, we expect big things out of Shushu character to the rightfully so. So I don't think this is it's a problem for them to be calling out Naya in a way, um, especially when they're asked about it, you know. But I do, th- I, me personally, I think that with Shushu character, even though he has an extensive amateur career, I do think that's a little too early for him to fight Naya in a way. Uh, he only has 12 fights. I think he's a little green still, but he, he he's he's definitely promising. But I would prefer for Shushu character to handle business at Featherweight. You know, there's, he could become a champion. <laughs> and there's other fighters that he could fight at the Featherweight division that are, that, that would be good, good, uh, good fights for him. You know what I'm saying? So I do think that I will, I be Personally, I'll prefer that Shushu Carrington get some more wins, that notable wins at featherweight. I would prefer for uh, Ray Vargas, sorry, Ray Vargas. I'll, I'll prefer for Espinosa to fight other champions like Ray Vargas and Nick Ball and, and Luis Lopez, you know, in the featherweight division. And then if, if Naya, and I would like for Naya anyway to fight Akhmadaliev, you know, eventually. I know he's fighting TJ Doheny, um, which I, I I think I fully anticipate him to whoop him easily. But um, no disrespect to TJ Doheny. But I would, I, the only fight I want for Naya anyway, super better way, is MJ Akhmadaliev, which I still think he wins, but I think it's a very competitive fight. They all have other fights that they can happen. And also, not to mention the scenario. A lot of people are saying my scenario. Don't let people steal my scenario out there. I was the first one to say I've been saying this since last year. I would love, hypothetically, even more than Naya Inouye versus Shushu, even more than Naya Inouye versus uh, uh, Rafael Espinosa. I want Naya Inouye. I want a dream match between Naya Inouye and Juto Nakatani. Juto Nakatani is that bantamweight and who has a championship at uh, bantamweight? Naya Inouye's younger brother, Takuba Inouye. I want Juto Nakatani to go and fight Takuba Inouye, who I fully anticipate that Juto would beat uh, Takuba Inoue in a good fight, then that would set up a very interesting revenge arc, kind of like <laughs> an anime-esque revenge arc. Your brother's soul is mine. Ah! You will be next. Between Naya Inoue and Juto Nakatani, like Naya Inoue has his revenge arc that he wants to come back down and avenge his loss, uh, uh, his brother's loss, you know, and Juto Nakatani and Naya Inoue, that'd be an explosive matchup. Don't let anybody steal my scenario. I've been hearing a lot of people say that. I've been saying this since last year. Don't let anybody, <laughs> hey, y'all gotta, y'all gotta, y'all gotta fight for me out there in the YouTube comments, you know what I'm talking about? In the YouTube streets. They be trying to steal my stuff. But yeah, man, so I think that there's a whole lot of other things that can be done before Naya Inoue moves up the featherweight. But then when he eventually does, then you know what I'm saying? Then, 
let, let, let the chips fall as they may, and then we'll get Naya Inouye versus Shushu or, or Rafael, uh, El Davido Espinosa, and stuff like that, man. But I do think we do got to hold our horses. However, I do think that people need to stop blaming these fighters for seemingly calling out Naya Inouye. No, they're not really. They're just answering the questions. They're just fielding the questions. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Rafael Espinosa, he clearly said that he wants to, he wants to, prioritize unifying the division but people are saying oh another guy calling out anyway a smaller anyway bro he's being asked these questions man what do you want him to say oh no i don't want to fight anyway they're fighters man they're gonna take they're gonna take on challenges they're gonna welcome challenges so i do think that there's other steps for to be taken but yeah i think all these fights are interesting if they eventually happen when they happen but i i, I personally would prefer for rafael uh, uh espinoza to fight the other champions at featherweight and i prefer for dalia anyway after he beats doheny um if he doesn't go fight Sam Goodman immediately to fight Akba Daliev, and then when he moves up, then we could talk about, you know, other fighters like Shushu. And I would like for Shushu to get some more notable wins. That's just my personal opinion. I appreciate y'all walking with me as always. Y'all be easy. Take care of yourselves. Remember with God, we can do anything without God. We are nothing. We will be live today, uh, 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 providing live boxing commentary for the fight um, in England today, too. So, um, yeah, tune in for that. I appreciate y'all walking with me. We out. God bless. The doctor's out. Peace. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.